Hi, I'm Kendra. I'm Chris. And we're from Evolve Dating, Dating Gurus. Gurus. Ooh, we said it at the same time. We right did, there. nice. <laughs> so today we want to talk about where do I meet people? What we want to do is, before we launch into what we're going to be learning today, just a really quick moment of mindfulness. Mindfulness has been really proven to help us to settle into our body and into a space of being more receptive. So you'll be able to take in what we are talking about more if you just follow along. So basically, it's really simple. We're just going to be mindful of two breaths. Being mindful means just paying attention to your two breaths. Okay? Take a breath in. And exhale out. Take a little slightly deeper breath in. Let it out with a little sound. Sound does make a difference. It loosens up all the bits in there and sends a vibration out into the earth for grounding and just feeling relaxed. Give that a try. Do it. So today we want to talk about something that's a super popular topic. Pretty much everyone, I think, at some point asks us this question, which is, where do I meet people? Where do I meet people? Where do I meet, do I meet my people? Like, of course you can meet people, but like, yes. where can I meet That's people? That's what right? people are really asking. It's not just where can you meet people. You can bump into people in the street, see them in the library, whatever. They want to know where they can meet their people, people they resonate with, and that are also open and available to actually connecting. Like, I, I'm not going to scare some girl when I walk up to her and say, hey, my name's Chris. In a dark alley. Yeah. So we have two main tips that... <laughs> So we have to, when you're wanting to meet your people, one thing that's really important is to consider the environment that you're in. And so we have a hair in our eye. <laughs> so we've kind of figured out that, fuck. We've figured out two main ingredients that really make for a open environment. And the two main ingredients are, one, ingredients. You want to stir in a little bit of making sure that um, it's a place where there's a common interest. People have gathered for a common reason. The second thing is that people are expecting to meet new people. So common interest, what kind of common interest? If you are going to a class, you're going to a class to learn photography, photography. Or maybe painting. And there's probably a meetup. Meetup is a great venue to actually meet people that are like-minded, maybe doing unusual things. There's great ones around language, art. Potato peeling. Photography, you know, you name it. Clay molding. And head massaging classes. You can literally type in like anything mm -hmm. and there's pretty much like you're gonna find ball hopping. We run some meetups and they're focused on relationship skill building and people that are open to meeting other singles. So look at meetup and look at these classes and you're going to find one, you're meeting for a common reason, mm. common interest, and two is that you're expecting that you're going to meet new people. So those are some options there and we have an exhaustive list that we've compiled that you can download as well. And then, the, and then there's kind of like the, the places that you know, we commonly think of as a, as a good place to meet people, like a coffee shop, a bar, you know, pool hall, or whatever, you know, that don't necessarily have that second ingredient that's critical, we feel, or, or at least important factor in the ability to have conversation and socialize. A person could be going to a bar with their friends, not wanting to meet new people. So then to just be like approached can, Sometimes be uncomfortable, or if you're at a museum, same thing, or um, at the gym. Like I, Chris and I have noticed this at our own gym, where we'll like try to approach someone and then realize like, oh shit, they have Definitely. headphones They're on. In the They're, zone. They didn't even hear what yeah. I just said. They're not open a connection so. necessarily. What we're really here to talk to you about is something that we feel is is more important than those factors, and that is what is your internal environment when you're in any kind of environment. I said I can, environment like three times. Internal, external. Environment. The, environments are. Uh, environmental environment. And when you're considering your environmental environments, speaking from personal experience, I had many years of de depression and social anxiety and all kinds of stuff like that. So I can say that I've been in environments in that time where they were very open environments. 
people that I even know and I know love me, but mm. since my inner environment was feeling very closed off, I couldn't even see that. I would be exuding like kind of a closed offness too and wouldn't be really receptive to people coming up to me or whatever it is. We want to teach you a little bit about how to create an open environment so that no matter where you are, um, these guidelines will work. When people say like she had a certain vibe or he, he seemed really confident or you know that to us is a signal and a sign of like the inner environment being in the place that is open to relating and connecting. And it's easy to induce with some focus and choice. We like to talk about a couple of key mindfulness practices you've probably heard of, which, which is focusing on the breath. But even seeing if you can imagine breathing into your heart space. So you're breathing with the intention of opening up your heart. Feeling your heart, maybe even imagining the breath going into your heart, circulating back out. And then another thing is actually looking through the eyes of your heart. Because if your heart had eyes, how would your heart be seeing things? How would it be seeing and taking in the environment? And how would it be receiving people and approaching people outside of themselves? So you can do this right now. You can just look around the room and find something to land your eyes on that is that just feels like a content thing to look at. It might be a plant. I like, I, I think choosing a plant is... I like looking at Kim. Or you can choose me. <laughs> but what you're gonna do is just let your eyes land on, on something in particular that is catching your attention. And then see if you can practice that breathing in through your heart. And then looking at it through the eyes of your heart. And then maybe even having a little bit of that feeling of smiling through your eyes. It sounds a little wild and wackadoodle, but it works. Wackadoodle. And it's metaphorically, of course, and looking through your heart, feeling with your heart is a way of, you know, tapping into your inner self, your, your source energy, and, and a way to like regulate the feelings that you're feeling, like coming back to you and then creating the, the feeling of relaxation, the depth of connection to everything around you. So that kind of oneness feeling takes that critical mind or that busy mind um, and relaxes it to a place where you're then available and open. Feels good. Try it. If I look at like the story of what I was saying when I was kind of more closed off, I was looking at the space through my head, through my critical and analytical brain, rather than looking at it through my heart. So that's our tip for today. And one other thing that we want to give you a tip on that we observed recently in our own lives is we recently got a new roommate named Bruno who just moved here. And he's really brought, like he's opened our eyes to bringing this kind of like child life curiosity and child life. Child, child life. Child life oh, curiosity. I thought I, he is just like fascinated with the new place, finding uh, things to do, people to meet. Really that vibe, that energy of curiosity has made it a lot easier for him to start to make connections. And you can really create that feeling uh, inside. Even if you've been in a place for a long time, try that when you're starting to go out and think about meeting new people and, and open environments is can I look at it with fresh eyes and uh, bring that energy and see what shows up? So to wrap it up, the three things that we want you to do is one, check out that PDF with the list of open environments. It's in the links. Two Hello. is to try the heart practice. So breathing in through your heart, smiling looking through your eyes. heart, smiling through your eyes. Um, and the third thing is, is taking on the perspective of a person who just moved here. You got nothing to lose and you have everything to learn about this place mm -hmm. and everything to learn about people. And so just going out there as if you're like visiting here for the first time and you just want to meet people and see places and enjoy yourself. We love you. Till next time. Till next time. Pretty good. Yeah. Should we do a little dance? A little dance. 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 A
make sure that you make a noise when you high five. Because you know how, like, it's nothing worse than, like, just, like, missing. So you look at the other person's elbow every single time. That's another tip for the day. Definitely. <laughs> okay. All right, so we're testing number three. Testing one, two, this three. Is position number three. Position this number is three. Uh, the morning show with Chris and Kendra. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> And we're back. And we're back at position one. How are you out How's there in the wonderful testing, wide world testing. of the weather, Kendra? Oh my god, the weather is so great. It looks like rain and snow all at once. It's a wintry mix. 